this good evening everyone so in the last video we discussed what are the basics involved in engineering mechanics like what is meant by force uh, types of force and the system of forces so these all basic we already discussed in the previous video so now we will go to the what are the principles involved in the engineering mechanics so this is the first principle that is parallelogram law of forces i think in the lower classes only we discuss we you know everything about this uh, parallelogram law of for forces uh, when you observe the case here if two forces represent the uh, i mean sides of the parallelogram and also these two forces having magnitude and direction so again i am repeating these two forces are acting at a point and these two forces having magnitude and direction so what does it meaning magnitude and direction means this is the direction and magnitude means this particular force is having some value okay magnitude and direction and these two forces represents the adjacent sides of the parallelogram so these two are represents the adjacent sides the uh, adjacent sides of parallelogram so for these two forces there is a one resultant force will be there okay this resultant force may be passing through the same point so this resultant uh, uh, that the resultant forces of these two forces is passing through the same point and and represents the resultant and represent the diagonal of the parallelogram so this is the statements uh, statement involved in the parallelogram law of forces so again i'll i'll explain this uh, this concept so the two forces are passing at a point they represents the uh, adjacent sides of parallelogram which is having both magnitude and direction for these two forces there is a resultant which is passing same point and it represents the diagonal of the parallelogram so what is this resultant formula means r is equals to square root of p square plus q square plus 2p q cos theta this is the resultant formula and where the resultant is acting that is the alpha alpha is equals to tan inverse of q sin theta by p plus q cos theta this is the parallelogram law of forces for example if i need to calculate resultant uh, resultant for three forces means three forces are acting at one point so what uh, what is the concept uh, we have to do means so that is the case we have to go for resolved forces so what is this resolved forces means if force is acting an inclination with one axis then for this force having two components which comes x axis and which comes y axis so how this resolve resolve forces we will see in the whiteboard so see if 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 you consider this is the x axis and this is the y axis and the what you consider force is acting here this is a force and it is making an angle theta with x axis okay and you have to draw one perpendicular line for this case for x component i am considering as this is f1 and y component i am going to consider as f2 so in the lower standard you already studied uh, all those things that is uh, uh, cos theta is equals to adjacent side by hypotenuse and uh, sin theta is equals to opposite side by hypotenuse you already studied in the mathematics so same concept here also you have to involve so i need to calculate this f1 
so i need to calculate this f1 so that this is the adjacent side of the triangle okay and this is the opposite side so i need to calculate this uh, adjacent side so that's why i am taking f1 is equals to adjacent uh, sorry uh, cos theta is equals to f1 adjacent side by f when you separate this uh, f1 case f1 is equals to f cos theta f1 is equals to f cos theta now same thing for y axis also so this thing you have to consider as f2 so therefore sin theta is equals to sin theta is equals to f2 opposite side by hypotenuse means here we have to consider as f so therefore f2 is equals to f sin theta these two are components of the f okay these these two are components of the f as the same thing if in the same thing uh, i'll go with one more uh, exercise this is the x axis and this is the y axis and this is the force and it makes an angle theta with and force makes an angle theta with uh, y axis so for this case what is the component will happen so same thing i am consider this one as a f1 and this is the f2 okay this is the f1 and this is the f2 same procedure will come i mean uh, uh, if theta this one is theta this is opposite side and this is the adjacent side and this is the hypotenuse side so when you if you want to calculate the f1 so finally f1 is equals to uh, f sin theta will come f1 is equals to f sin theta will come and f2 is equals to f cos theta will come f cos theta so i'll go with one shortcut uh, you just remember that shortcut so uh, i mean uh, what is the inclination here theta so which axis this inclination is going if it is x axis you have to consider cos theta for x case other than this you have to go for sin theta okay i i'll, I'll show with a small example see this is the x axis and this is the y axis and this is the force is acting if theta makes with x axis cos theta component will come for x axis and the sin theta will come for y axis you just remember like this you should not uh, 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 all the uh, procedure you just remember as a shortcut and next one if if theta makes uh, this is x and this is y and this is the force if theta makes with y axis so cos theta will come for y axis cos theta component i mean component for y axis for cos theta and for x axis sin theta will come for x axis sin theta will come means what does it meaning means if theta makes which axis you have to understand if theta makes with x axis automatically you just give as cos theta for x axis other than this one sin theta you have to give okay you just remember like this so now when you go for the formulas here resolved forces so splitting of forces so i am going to split this force into two components one is uh, here as per this figure, I am considering this is fx is equals to f cos theta and fy is equals to f sin theta. The same thing I, I told in the whiteboard also. 
so this is one of the example i like i'll explain in the board also how we are going to take this components and everything next uh, we'll go for the equilibrium system of forces when when we say equilibrium uh, the particular system of forces are in equilibrium so for example uh, you see again in the whiteboard so if you consider this is the axis in the four direction the force is acting this is the f1 and which is makes an angle theta with one axis and next one this is f2 and this is the theta makes with uh, one more axis and next one this is f3 and this is the theta makes with one more axis these three are uh, forces are acting one point if i need to calculate resultant for this case so if the if in your system of forces only two forces then you will go with directly r is equals to square root of p square plus q square plus 2 pq cos theta i think you already uh, i already explained in the previous slide so this one is very easy if two forces are there you can choose this resultant formula p square plus q square plus 2 pq cos theta but here three forces are acting so the, uh, for three forces how can you calculate the resultant this one is very important so r is equals to for calculating resultant uh, r is equals to square root of summation of horizontal square that is fx square the forces are acting in x direction and the next one the forces are acting in y direction you have to sum up and you have to give so and you have to substitute in this formula finally you got resultant if more than two forces you have to take this formula resultant r is equals to square root of summation of fx square plus summation of fy square this is the resultant formula so how can get this uh, fx value how can we get this uh, fy value so first step is you have to take um, so first of all you have to resolve this f1 f2 and f3 so finally you got uh, you got the figure like this see this one so this is the axis so here uh, here f f1 is making an angle so that f1 cos theta and uh, for same thing f1 sin theta for f2 when you see this f2 here theta makes with y axis i mean theta with y axis so that uh, you have to consider uh, this is f2 cos theta as the same thing and for uh, f2 sin theta will come for x axis and uh, next one when you observe the f3 so this is the theta with the same y axis also for this case you have to take cos theta here and sin theta you just uh, observe the case here this force f1 is resolved in x axis and y axis and the same thing f2 is resolved in y axis and x axis and f3 also resolved in x axis and y axis now i am taking f3 here so so this is f3 so f3 cos and next one f3 sin here okay after resolving so after completion of your resolving uh, you just uh, re, uh, i mean observe the case here how many forces are acting in horizontal direction and how many forces are acting in vertical direction that means y direction here three forces are acting in x direction and the three forces are acting in y direction you just sum up of all these means 
while considering the arrows here so here these two are acting towards right, right side direction so that uh, you have to consider this two are positive and this f2 sign theta is acting left side towards left side so that you have to consider as negative and the next one these two are in vertical direction these two are acting upward direction so that you have to consider as positive and this one force is acting downward direction so that's why you have to take as negative you just sum up of all these cases means separately you have to find summation of fx and summation of fy okay so after this case you just substitute in this formula i think uh, uh, you will observe this formula you just substitute in this formula finally you will get some i mean you will get some value that is the uh, resultant of of these three forces if more than two forces you just uh, you just do the procedure like this if in your system of forces only two forces are there you just do the resultant by using this formula r is equals to square root of p square plus uh, uh, q square plus 2pq cos theta and where the inclination where the resultant force uh, um, is acting means uh, formula is here alpha is equals to this is very important one alpha is equals to tan inverse of alpha is equals to tan inverse of summation of fy by summation of fx so this is the formula for where the in resultant force is acting so tan inverse of fy by fx so first of all so i'm i'm going to repeat the steps you just remember so if the three forces are acting if you want to calculate the resultant so this is the formula first of all you have to resolve the forces like this so horizontal component and vertical component you have to resolve like this for all forces after this one you have to give the i mean uh, notations for towards right for horizontal case towards right direction you have to give positive for negative direction uh, towards left as the same thing in y direction also if the forces are acting upward you have to give positive for downward case you have to give negative then after individually you have to take as summation of fx equal to 0 summation of i mean summation of fx equal to and summation of f you have to calculate these two cases and you just substitute in this formula so after substitution finally got one resultant as the same thing uh, where the resultant end is acting means you have to do the i mean substitution of in this uh, uh, tan inverse of uh, summation of fy by summation of fx finally you got alpha value if for example if these are the three forces after calculation you i mean after completion of your calculation finally see finally r is equals to you will get r is equals to zero after calculating your resultant for uh, three forces or four forces whatever it is finally you will get r is equals to zero then these three forces are in equilibrium conditions so i'll i'll go with uh, with figure for example this these are the axis so this is f1 and this is f2 and this is f3 and this is f4 while uh, if you want to calculate the resultant for these four forces finally you got this zero value then we can say this joint is in equilibrium joint and the all these forces are in equilibrium condition so that is the concept involved in that is the concept involved in here equilibrium system of forces so you just observe the definition a body is said to be an equilibrium when we when you say the body is in equilibrium means if the uh, uh, resultant of all forces will be equals to zero then we can say it as a the uh, then we can say this equilibrium system of forces and finally these are the some formulas 
summation of fx equal to 0, summation of fy is equal to 0, summation of fz is equal to 0. Now, we will go for one small definition, then I will close this video. And next one, principle of superposition. You just observe the figure here. This one portion is applying a force and this person is also applying a force. So both are applying the same, I mean equal magnitude force but in opposite direction. Okay, these two person are applying a same force but it, these two are acting in opposite direction. After, I mean after removing these two forces, this body doesn't disturbed, means doesn't change any position. Then that principle is known as a principle of superposition. Even after removing or adding, there will be no change in the system or position of body. Then we can say it as principle of superposition. I think uh, I'll, you will get understand after seeing this uh, these figures. So thank you. And the next video we will see the uh, free body diagram concepts free body diagram concepts so and like this what are the forces are acting in a body myelin contact surfaces and the next one i'll go with one small example for calculating resultant for i mean forces are acting at one point so these two concepts we will discuss in the next video so uh, so thank you uh, for this case for your understanding